Hello again, Helldiver. Today we're going to talk about optimizing the various kinds of farming you might be doing in Helldivers 2. Now, there's a lot of people that have been talking a lot about farming the best way here and there and making videos on all of these kinds of things. There's a lot of good information out there already and I'm just trying to add a little bit to it. Don't consider my video a definitive, the only one you need to watch. It's always good to vary the sources of information that you're getting. But here I'm going to try and cover some stuff that I'm not seeing covered in all these other videos that I've been watching on the subject. So we're going to talk about a few different kinds of farming today and a few different things you want to consider when you're doing these types of farming and just hopefully help you make uh, your time spent in Helldivers 2 a little more efficient so that you can maximize the amount of time having fun and just playing the game normally. A note first about farming, I know it's kind of an artificial way to play the game, right? You're supposed to just be playing with other people all the time normally, but there's been issues with the game, and it's a live service multiplayer game too, so there's a lot of reasons why as an individual you might log on, sit down, and not have an opportunity to just play with anybody that you want. It might be better for you to play a solo session and do a little farming. There's nothing wrong with that in my eyes. The people that are trying to kind of put shame on people for farming, I think, are a little bit, uh, a little bit silly. And I think uh, we can all agree that just spending the time that you want to spend in the way that you want to spend it in the game that you spent money on is probably fine. We've gotten confirmation that you know failing operations for farming reasons and things like that is not really hurting anybody. And some of the things I'm going to cover here aren't going to ask you to necessarily go in and fail a bunch of stuff really quickly you can do a lot of this stuff and complete operations at the, and even full campaigns on some of the lower difficulty levels at least uh, but we'll get into that the first thing you should consider when farming for resources in Helldivers 2 is your map choice there's lots of different planets that you have available to you and there's two different enemy factions right now and you're gonna encounter different scenarios on different planets and different map types with different objectives and so you need to know the variety that's out there in order to know which kind of choice is going to be the best for whatever you're trying to farm at this moment. In general, you're going to look for maximizing your available farmland. Generally speaking, you want to avoid cliffs, canyons, dust, large bodies of water, and maps that are segmented off in any other kind of way. These types of maps are going to limit the amount of points of interest and other places where all these resources can spawn and so some maps are going to literally going to have less on them than other maps on other planets and other biomes and so they'll be maybe a little bit better for certain types of missions if you're looking to just play the game normally but if you're looking to farm and maximize your time spent farming these these planets are not going to be as good so you're going to want to maximize the available farmland You'll want to look for maps that have lots of space to spawn plenty of points of interest to find all of the resources that you're looking for. I'll get into the types of resources that you can farm and what you'll want to pick for each of those things later on in the video when I talk about the different difficulties. There's something here. But the maps are always going to be more or less the same when you're farming on whether it, whatever difficulty you're farming on. You're mostly going to be looking to maximize the amount of space that you have to farm what you have. You're also going to want to look for maps that have easy objectives that you know you can complete quickly and not have to spend a lot of time on. And you're going to want to pick a planet that you can see well in. Dropmere and Crimsica are two that I like a lot. Highland and Primordial planets have tended to be the ones that give me the best spaces for farming, so you might try your luck with those. I've also found it doesn't really matter if you want to go with bots or bugs if you're going for the lower level farming. On higher levels, it's probably more up to your preference, but on lower levels, it probably won't matter too much if you want to go on a bot mission or a bug mission to farm whatever particular resource you're trying to get. The second thing to talk about when you're farming in Helldivers is picking the right loadout. So if you're going to be farming super samples and moving around a lot and avoiding a lot of fights, you're probably going to want a jetpack. If you're farming on an automaton planet, you're probably going to want a personal shield of some sort. If you're doing a larger map solo and trying to clear everything, you might want a supply pack on your back to help you get through all of the spaces between resupplies. And especially on bug hunt maps where you've got lots of bug holes to close, you'll want the supply pack for the extra grenades. As far as shields go, I've been using the ballistic shield with an SMG when I go to automaton plants to farm. 
But if you prefer to use a two-handed weapon, you can use the shield generator backpack. Now when it comes to eagles, if you're playing on automaton planets, you'll probably want to bring an eagle airstrike with you for taking out bot factories. Eagle airstrikes and eagle cluster bombs also tend to be better used against bot formations because of the way they tend to spread out on the map. If you're bringing an orbital airstrike in, I'd recommend something that's better for group clear. I tend to prefer the air burst because you can drop it on a spot like a bot drop or a bug breach, run off, and ensure that you're going to get several kills and probably be able to break contact. I've been tending to use the machine gun sentry as a distraction to clear out points so that I can move in from another angle and stealthily loot whatever I need to while the enemy is distracted by my machine gun turret. On higher difficulties, I've been tending to use the Tesla Tower due to its shorter cooldown and its ability to be left behind and draw a lot of attention from the enemies to allow you to, to break contact and get to a safe spot, especially when you're farming for super samples. I also tend to not bring a support weapon when I'm doing these farming runs now because when you're farming, you don't need to fight a whole bunch of stuff. You're here to complete the objective and then look around and find things. So because you're looking around and finding things, I think it's best to try to find a support weapon while you're there. So when I run these farming runs, support weapons tend to be OSP, on-site procurement. The third thing to consider when you're doing farming is rooting when you're in the map. Now you always want to ensure that you're not backtracking. So always make sure that even if you have to cross back over your path, you're doing it in a different direction. You're not going directly over the same route you've already gone over. It's usually best to drop near your main objective, complete it as quickly as possible, and then spend the rest of your time roaming around the map. If you do things this way, then you'll be able to clear out as much as you can clear out from all of the minor points of interest and so on. And if time happens to run out, you won't leave yourself needing to complete the main objective before you can extract and leaving you with a failed mission. While you're running around, you'll tend to see a lot of patrols, and most of the time you'll want to avoid these patrols. Occasionally, though, a patrol might look like it's going to wander close enough to you that someone's going to spot you. If that happens, the best course of action is to take a first strike mentality and use a stratagem to call in some kind of an airstrike that's quick and responsive and can take out the entire group in one go. This is the best way to avoid bug breaches and bot drops while you're out on your own, trying to avoid the patrols and avoid massive crowds of enemies clustering around you, pinning you in, and killing you. And on that note, if you do have to make contact with the enemy, you need to be sure that you finish off what you start. Several enemies, especially bugs, that you've aggroed and then run off and left will oftentimes chase you down across the entire map, even if you think you've broken contact. I've had chargers chase me across the entire map and then run right into me where I was hiding, where I was sure they didn't know that I was there. And finally, let's go through all the different types of resources that you might want to be farming and the difficulties that are best for those resources. I talked in my previous video about common sample farming on trivial difficulty, and that still seems to be the best way to collect common samples quickly. You can do those missions in under 10 minutes and usually get 10 to 15 common samples per mission, get out, and it's no big deal. However, I've seen people say that trivial missions are also the best for super credits farming, you can go in, hit the minor points of interest, and then just abandon the mission. Now, I don't actually think that that's the best way to do it. First of all, I think abandoning the mission going back to the ship on, on console has been giving me lots of network errors and other problems. and tends to introduce a lot of bugs into the whole routine. And that tends to slow me down more than it does anything else. In my experience, the best way to farm super credits is to go solo on an easy map. The trivial maps, especially on some of these planets with rougher terrain, will have their maps so limited that you won't be able to get as many minor points of interest spawned in the map to get enough chances to get super credits that sometimes you'll end up with as little as 0 or 10 super credits for your efforts. However, if you're doing easy matches, you still get the full 40 minutes, it's an easy objective that you can complete by yourself, and the map is much bigger allowing for many more points of interest to spawn and to kind of give you a little bit of bad luck protection. These maps will only take you 15 maybe to 20 minutes at the most to clear and you'll easily get at least twice as many super credits as you would for a trivial map. So in my experience if you're trying to farm super credits specifically 
go into easy matches, especially on automaton planets that are highlands and have lots of open spaces where lots of minor points of interest are able to spawn, and go in there and look for all of the boxes and all the crates that you can blow the doors off of and so on, and you'll find lots of super credits. I did one run recently on easy where I found 70 super credits and I did it in under 20 minutes. If you do these with a partner, you can also often get into several of the bunkers that require two people to open, and those will often have even more super credits on the shelves. Now, if you're looking for rare samples to farm, I've found the best way to farm those is actually with a group. Since you need to take on challenging or higher missions, doing those and clearing the entire map solo can be quite a task to ask for most people. Some people have found it pretty easy to do, but I think for most people, Asking someone to go into a challenging map solo and be able to avoid everything that you need to avoid, still clear the objective and find all of the rare samples in the map and extract is quite a lot to ask for. If you can find three other people that want to go into challenging maps and just clear everything out and do it regularly, I've found in my experience you can usually get the most rare samples in that way. And you can also tend to clear these maps a lot faster too because you can split up in groups after you've completed the main objective hit all the minor points of interest, and then regroup back at the LZ in order to fight off whatever's going to come at you before you extract. Now for farming super samples, if you want to do that solo, the only way to do it is to pull up a level 7, 8, or 9 mission and go in and find the little fist structure somewhere on the map, farm all the super samples, get back to the LZ, and just wait. I found the best way to do these is with the jump pack, because it allows you to get to higher points to avoid the enemy's line of sight. The biggest thing to consider when you're farming in Helldivers 2 though, is to remember to have fun. I find the activity of farming stuff solo quite relaxing. I like to turn on some music while I'm farming because there isn't too much that you need to listen for while you're in these missions. And oftentimes these little excursions are a great opportunity to try new stratagems you've just unlocked. If there's a new weapon you've just unlocked and you want to try it out, this is the perfect opportunity to do that. A couple of other things I want to say about Helldivers 2. I'm really enjoying my time with this game right now, and I have to say it's surprising me how much I'm thinking of my time with Metal Gear Survive as I'm playing this. It being a four-player co-op, kind of a horde mode style of, uh, of gameplay that you're fighting against, and having objectives that you're trying to defend, and places you're trying to move to on the map, and having limited visibility, and having to consider sort of pseudo survival mechanics in some cases like scrounging for ammo and so on I've been having a great time with this game I'm going to continue making a few videos on this game but I'm also not done making videos on Metal Gear and I'm not done making videos about Alan Wake 2 either I've got plans coming for those things but Helldivers 2 just came out and it's just captured my attention and there's not much I can do to avoid it so I feel like I have to make these videos right now while it's timely and I'm still planning on working on other stuff in the future, so... So yeah, I'll end this video by saying that I'll let another farming run play out. It's gonna be the easy map that I ran most recently that I was talking about getting the 70 super credits on it, so you can see it yourself. This is a pretty good run. This is a pretty good example of all the things I was trying to talk about in this video, so... Hopefully you can learn a few things from watching this, and maybe enjoy it. And if you haven't decided yet on picking up Helldivers 2, maybe this video can help convince you. If you're looking for a good four-player cooperative game, or even something that you can play solo in some different ways, this game's for you. If you enjoy Starship Troopers and parodies of fascism, this game's for you. If you, if you like games with crispy, great shooting mechanics and amazing visuals, this game's for you. If you want a game made by what seems to be a very passionate small team who cares a lot about their product, this game is for you. And so, with that said, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you all next time. Have a nice one. Peace out. The fate of all humanity's children are in your hands. Do not let them fall. Marking location. South. something.
There's something here. something. Tagging location, northwest. Objective located, southwest.
is returning the destroyer for resupply. Action is available. Sending down sentry. Extraction when ready. Administering freedom. Get some! Get some! Liberty dispensed.
Administering freedom. Orbital strike incoming. ETA T 
minus 30 seconds. ETA T minus 20 seconds. Super Earth's finest, back in action. ETA T minus 10 seconds. Arriving at coordinates. Pelican 1 landing sequence initiated. Watch where you're standing. Extraction complete. Pelican 1 beginning ascent. Thank you. 